Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the Clip Equalizer inside of DaVinci Resolve 14. So, in order to pull up the Equalizer in the Edit tab, you would enable the Inspector, and for the selected clip, you change from Video to Audio, where you'll have access to Clip Volume, basically how many decibels your audio is being played back at, you can increase and decrease that. And what the clip equalizer allows you to do is for specific frequencies, or basically ranges of frequencies, you can increase or decrease the decibel values. So in order to have clip equalizer enabled on a clip, uh, you would just toggle this on, and then the settings you have in the equalizer are going to apply to that clip. First off, I'm going to show you how my video sounds without the equalizer for a while before these features actually come out. And okay, and when we enable the clip equalizer, uh, you can notice that there is some area beneath the zero point for basically really low frequencies and really high frequencies. So that means uh, for frequencies that are around this area, they're going to be dropping in decibels. The lower the frequency, the lower that's going to be cut. I mean, the more decibels are going to be cut off. And at the high end, the higher the frequency, the more the cutoff. Hence the downward slope there and the increasing slope from the low frequencies to the mid frequencies. Um, now, of course, we'll be able to change that later, but here's how it will sound at the moment. So it should be a little while before these features actually come out. And if you really want to change things around, you're going to want to not only move around these uh, different band points, um, but you may also want to change the shape of each band. Uh, pretty self-explanatory for each of these. So like for instance, if you change band one to be uh, steady and then a downwards curve, it's going to give you exactly that, steady at the low frequency, and then a downwards curve as it gets halfway between one and two. So with these two middle options, what's going to happen is that the middle line where it's kind of flat, that means it's going to stay steady. And then it's going to move towards uh, basically the higher or lower point where this one happens to be. So it's going to start flat if I select this one, and then it's going to move down towards the one point. You can kind of see it sloping down. And then as it gets to two, it and the exact opposite happens when I choose this second option here, where it's going to start at the uh, basically the low point or the high point if we move this above the line. And it's going to curve in towards that flat point where it's uh, basically getting at the level of the second band. When you are dealing with a band that's in the middle, you have two different options. You can have peaks like this, where when the frequency is in this very specific range, what's going to happen is it's going to sharply decrease just for that range. So if there was a very specific sound that you needed to kind of cut out of the actual audio and you knew kind of what its frequency was and you play around with it until you find the frequency, uh, you could effectively lower the volume on that while making most other things kind of the same. Now there is one problem. If you have um, basically background noise that's the same frequency as the noise that you actually want to keep, then the equalizer won't really be an effective tool for you because it targets by frequencies. But if there's something that's at a completely different frequency, you can drastically lower or increase the audio of that um, as you wish and have it only target that frequency. So we also have this uh, secondary option here, which kind of looks like a diamond in the middle. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna start essentially at the first band point or whatever's to the left and it's going to slope, almost like a bell curve, into wherever we put the second band point. So if I drag this all the way down, it's going to drastically reduce the decibels, minus 20, at around this uh, 500 hertz range. And then it's going to slope back up towards wherever we have the band three point set. That does vary on where the point is set, obviously. So if I put this way high, then it's going to go up all the way until it reaches this point. Now, when you specifically have this diamond shape, you can increase the width of this shape. Basically, what frequencies do you want to capture in that? So the higher you increase Q, uh, the sharper this band is going to be, much more towards this uh, peak option. And if you have a lower Q, it's going to get flatter and flatter until it's more of a standard mathematical bell curve. Now, the other two settings here, frequency and gain, uh, you can actually control that just by moving these different band points around. So if I move this uh, this point 
and I move the frequency over here, you see the frequency increases because we move the location of that. And if we drop this down, the gain goes down a lot, which means lower volume. And if we bring this up, you're going to get higher volume. But we can control that basically in the same way by dragging these points up and down. So you left click and then you drag until you get the right decibels you want or the right frequencies you want. It's two different ways of accomplishing the same thing. So with a weird curve like this, we'll get some really strange results. Let's actually go ahead and play it so that I can show how this kind of affects the audio. It's probably not good this way, but we'll give it a shot. So you can see that it sounds a bit robotic because we increased some, fre um, some frequencies that maybe shouldn't have been increased, but we also lowered this middle frequency, which a lot of the audio it's just going to get dropped way down low. So you don't really get a good sounding audio just by doing that. Um, this is the sort of thing you need to play around and really figure out what works best with your video. And I'll go ahead and try to do that now so that we can get a little bit of better sounding audio for this clip. Oh, also worth mentioning, you can edit the clip equalizer levels while you actually have the clip playing. And that's actually a very effective way to get it to adjust to the sound you want because you can hear it while you're adjusting it and you can quickly make changes while it's still playing. Okay, so it doesn't sound too bad to me right now, so let's play it one more time without the equalizer and with the equalizer on. Okay, so you can see how it changes it a little bit. I didn't want to make anything too drastic, and we could probably adjust it a little bit more until we get it right. Uh, obviously, this would be more useful in other applications than just a talking video, um, because there's not really any other sounds in the background, is there? But uh, let's say you were recording a actual live film, and you had some things going on in the background, like special effects and that sort of thing, and it was recorded in the live video, not post-production. So then you can emphasize or de-emphasize certain uh, frequencies, which are going to kind of correlate with certain sounds in your video, by using the quick clip equalizer. In any case, that's at least a basic explanation of how the clip equalizer works. So I hope you got something out of this video, and I will see you guys on my future video content.